वेलकम बैक डियर फ्रेंड्स टू येट अनदर लेक्चर ऑन द हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज एंड लिटरेचर इन आर लेक्चर टुडे वी शैल इंट्रोड्यूस द ड्रामा ऑफ द फोर्टीज द ड्रामा ऑफ द फोर्टीज लाइक द वर्स ड्रामा द किचन सिंह ड्रामा द एप्सर ड्रामा एक्सेट्रा सो वी आर इन आर लेक्चर टूडे वी शैल डिस्कस द ड्रामा ऑफ द फोर्टीज सो द ड्रामा ऑफ द नाइनटीन फोर्टीज द डेक ऑफ द नाइनटीन फोर्टीज मार्क द एडवेंट ऑफ वर्स ड्रामा or rejuvenation of verse drama or poetic drama uh, and the well made plays now let's first discuss about uh, the verse drama or the poetic drama and we know the verse drama is any drama written in verse verse drama is any drama written in verse to be performed by an actor before an audience now verse drama is also called poetic drama Uh, the verse drama is usually written in blank verse now most elizabethan and jacobian drama are verse drama the 18th and 19th century did not contribute much to the verse drama so after the elizabethan and the jacobian period there was no much contribution in the verse drama uh, writing plays and verse became out of fashion by the 19th century now this can be partly attributed to ibsen who thought verse was the language of gods and didn't want his human characters to speak in verse on stage so the verse drama was quite popular and was flourishing during the elizabethan and the jacobian times but uh, after those periods we see a decline of the verse drama and it was w b yeats who tried to revive this verse or poetic drama but he did not succeed w b yeats now it was t s eliot eliot who firmly established this form he said that the craving for poetic drama is permanent in human nature he said that poetry was the complete medium of medium for drama uh, eliot's murder in the cathedral that came in 1935 triggered the onset of poetic drama triggered the revival and rejuvenation of poetic drama now this was followed by the family re- reunion that came in 1939 the cocktail party that came in 1949 uh, the family reunion that came in 1939 the cocktail party that came in 1949 the confidential clerk that came in 1953 the elder statesman that came in 1958 so another playwright who pursued the line of poetic drama is christopher fry christopher fry is best known for his verse dramas notably the ladies not for burning that came in 1948 Uh, he was uh, with T S Eliot the leading figure for the revival and rejuvenation of poetry drama that took place in Britain in the late 1940s so that is something regarding the verse drama or the poetry drama and then we need to remember W B Yeats T S Eliot and Christopher Fry now we shall mention something about the well made plays well made plays well made plays is a dramatic genre from 19th century theater first codified by the french dramatist eugene scribe the well made play was a popular form of entertainment well made play it is a play constructed according to a predetermined pattern and aiming at neatness of plot and theatrical effect- effectiveness but often being mechanical and stereotypes so well made well made plays so theatrical eff- uh, effectiveness well made plots etc Uh, they are constructed according to certain strict technical principles well made plays the well made plays uh, displaced the human relationship uh, focused on middle class and appealing to the middle class the well made plays were focused on the middle class a typical play in the genre is the winslow boy that came in 1946 by terence rattigan terence rattigan was a british dramatist and a screenwriter his plays are typically set in an upper middle class background he wrote the winslow winslow boy 1946 and the browning version in 1948 the deep blue sea in 1952 and separate tables in 1954 and many uh, other uh, novels he has written by the mid 19 uh, by the mid 19th century however uh, the well made plays had already entered into common use as a derogatory term nobody uh, like appreciated the uh, well made plays henry ibsen uh, and henry ibsen and the other realistic drama dramatists of the later 19th century built upon this technique of careful construction 
and preparation of effects in a new genre called problem play. So that is something regarding the well-made plays uh, which uh, lost its popularity. Now let's talk something about the Royal Court Theatre. The Royal Court Theatre uh, at different times known as the Court Theatre is a non-commercial theatre in, in England. A non-commercial theatre. In 1956 it was acquired by and remains the home of the English stage company. English stage company and it is notable for his contribution to contemporary theatre. The English stage company opened at the Royal Court in 1956 was a subsidized theatre producing new British and foreign plays together with some classical revivals etc. The, the, the English stage company gave new turn to English drama. The English stage company, they gave new turn to English drama. The stage company was intended uh, to encourage promising native writers and also to present well-known continental plays. It boosted the concept of the angry young man and signaled the kitchen sink drama. The kitchen sink drama. So what is kitchen sink drama? Uh, kitchen sink drama uh, or kitchen sink realism it is called. So, kitchen sink drama or kitchen sink realism, it is a British cultural movement. It is a British cultural movement that developed in the 18, in the 1950s and in the early 1960s in theatre, in art, in novels, in film and television plays etc. The protagonists of these kitchen sink dramas, they are usually described as young, angry young men, angry young men who were disillusioned with modern society. It used a style of social realism which depicted the domestic situation of working class. Britons living in a crammed rented accommodation and spending their off hours drinking in grimy pubs. Now, this drama also was used to explore controversial social and political issues ranging from uh, abortion to uh, abortion to homelessness etc. Now this type of drama, the kitchen sink drama, it depicts the failure and frustration of the working class people. Uh, John James Osborne is an English dramatist who would depict the dissatisfied angry men of the new generation. So John James Osborne, uh, he will depict the dissatisfied angry men of this of the new generation. Now, Osborne was an uh, English playwright. Uh, James John James Osborne was an English playwright. He was a screenwriter. He was an actor. He was critical towards established social and political norms. So he is critical of established norms. The success of his 1956 play Look Back in Anger transformed the Indian theater, uh, English theatre the play is a perfect example of the depiction of the dissatisfied angry men of the new generation. The play is set in, in a working class flat. The, the protagonist is Jimmy, a disgruntled young man who rails against the established social system, the established government, religion, uh, in a language that is neither civil or polite. Uh, he raises his voice against all kinds of established social systems. So that is something about uh, some information, little information about the kitchen sink drama whose protagonists were usually the angry men of the new generation who were dissatisfied with the established social systems of the times. We should also have a short description about, uh, mention about the absurd drama. Absurd drama. Absurd drama is a form of drama that takes the form of a reaction to a world that seems to have no meaning. Reaction to a world that seems to have no meaning. World has no meaning. Man is just a puppet. There is no meaning in human life. Human is nothing and he will die like any other, uh, hu any other animal. It seems out of an apparent meaninglessness in, meaninglessness in life. So, uh, absurd drama talks about meaninglessness in life. It is a form of drama that is a reaction to people or reaction of people without any destination, without any direction, without any aim in life. The theatre of the absurd. It emerged in France after the traumatic experience of the two world wars 
and the German Holocaust of six million Jews. So out of the terrible experience of the world was this attitude, meaninglessness is emerging. The dramas express the inability to make sense of human actions, human choices and the life itself. The term theater of the absurd, it was coined by Martin Eslin and Martin Eslin will describe the plays of authors like Samuel Beckett, Harold Pinter, Jean Janet etc. The characteristics of these uh, dramatists, uh, these absurdist dramatists are non-linear plots and handicapped or uh, moribund characters who lives, whose lives are meaningless. Uh, the character, the lives of the characters are meaningless. The characters of the drama experience metaphysical anguish. Metaphysical anguish. You know what is metaphysical anguish? Is an anguish. Uh, metaphysical anguish is the deep mental pain or confusion or agony. Metaphysical anguish is the pain that artists out of their thought that there is no meaning in existence. Uh, it is also known as the existential uh, dilemma, uh, metaphysical anguish. There is no uh, meaning in life. The characters experience and express meaningless in life and in their actions. Now, in this place, uh, nothing happens, nobody comes, nobody goes. It's awful. So, nothing happens, no nobody comes, nobody goes, it's awful. Now, it is a statement from the absurdist drama, Waiting for Goddard by Samuel Beckett. Now, that is the attitude of these abs absurdist, absurdist dramas. This statement describes the sentiment of the plot and characters of the absurd, absurdist drama. There is no meaning in life. Nothing comes, nothing goes. It's awful. Now there is a contradiction between man and the universe. Man does not live in harmony with the universe. And so his existence is useless. That it can be defined as absurd. So the existence of man is useless, absurd. There is no meaning in life. The existential anguish. This condition, this situation, this attitude is arising out of the experiences of the world wars, etc. The philosophers who have influenced the absurdist drama are Albert Camus, Jean Paul Sartre, etc. Now, both, of, both these are existential philosophers. Albert Camus is an agnostic who declared, I do not believe in God and I am not an atheist. He does not believe in God. Uh, Jean Paul Sartre. He was 20th century's most famous atheist. So, people who are dis disillusioned about life who say there is no meaning in life. Now, this attitude is expressed in absurd drama. Three important dramatists we need to remember uh, uh, on this particular genre are Samuel Beckett and Harold Pinder and uh, Tom Stoppard. Samuel Beckett, who lived from 1906 to 1989. Samuel Beckett was uh, an Irish novelist. Uh, he was a playwright, he was a short story writer. Uh, he was a theatre director, he was a poet, he was, he was also a literary translator, uh, Samuel Beckett. Uh, he resided in Paris for most of his adult life. He wrote in both French and English. He is one of the key figures in the theatre of the absurd. Samuel Beckett is one of the most important figures in the theatre of the absurd. And, and the best known play of Samuel Beckett is Waiting for Goddard. Waiting for Goddard. Beckett was uh, awarded the 1969 Nobel Prize in Literature. Uh, what are some of the fictions of Samuel Beckett? Uh, though Samuel Beckett is acclaimed as uh, the exponent of uh, uh, exponent of the absurd drama, he also has written successful fiction. He has written a few novels. The trilogy Molly, uh, Marlon Dies and the uh, Unnameable uh, written between 1951 and 53 yeah, where some of his successful fiction, some of his uh, novels. What are some of the plays of Samuel Beckett? Beckett's Waiting for Goddard, the most famous uh, play by Samuel Beckett. Uh, Waiting for Goddard is considered uh, a hallmark of the theatre of the absurd. Now, originally the play was written in French in 1948 and later on it was translated to English. The play's two Im protagonists, please remember the protagonists of this play, uh, Vladimir and Estragon. Vladimir and Estragon, they give voice to Beckett's existentialism. The phrase waiting for Goddard is used to describe a situation where they are waiting for something to happen. They are waiting for something to happen, but it probably will never happen. 
in the play the two characters vladimir and estrogen uh, they engaged in a variety of discussion and, and encounters uh, they engage in a variety of discussion while awaiting for god out and this god out will never come the god out will never arrive the other plays of samuel beckett include uh, end game that came in 1958 Uh, Kapas last tape that came in 1959 breaths that came in 1969 there is something regarding samuel beckett now harold pinder and tom stop stoppard drew inspiration from the play waiting for god out by samuel beckett i will talk something about harold pinder harold pinder who lived from 1932 2008 harold pinder he was one of the most influential english playwrights and playwright you know harold printer now he was uh, he won uh, international renown as one of the most complex and the most challenging post world war 2 dramatist he won nobel prize for literature in 2005 he was a playwright he was a screenplay writer he was a director he was an actor as well harold printer he created uh, 29 plays and 15 dramatic sketches he began to write for stage from 1956 onwards his first two plays are the room and the dumb waiter the do the room that came in 1957 and the dumb waiter that came in 1959 now these two plays were one act dramas the dumb waiter established harold pinder as a dramatist now his full uh, his first full length play was the birthday party that came in 1958 the birthday party the play was uh, not very well received it is said that this play puzzled the london audience and the play lasted only a week later this particular play was televised and uh, revised on the stage his second full length play was the caretaker it was produced in 1960 and it was filmed in 1963 his early works were described by critics as comedy of menace his uh, works were described as the comedy of menace what is comedy of menace comedy of menace is a play in which the laughter of the audience in some or all the situations is immediately followed by a feeling of some impending disaster so the laughter is followed by some kind of disaster the audience is made aware of some menace in the very midst of their laughter the laughter is followed by some kind of menace tragedy comedy of menace is the body of plays written by david crampton nigel dennis uh, nf simpson and harold printer harold printer the later plays uh, such as no man's land that came in 1975 betrayal that came in 1978 became known as memory plays so there is a comedy of menace menace now there is the memory plays by harold pinter what is a memory plays memory plays a uh, memory plays a play in which a lead character narrates the events of the play which are drawn from the character's memory uh, the events are drawn from the character's memory the term was coined by the playwright tennis williams tennis williams so in addition to the to works for the stage harold pinter also wrote radio and television dramas and a number of successful motion picture screenplays uh, he was an actor in production uh, he was an actor in production of his own works and those of other writers on radio as well as on film so that is something regarding uh, harold pinter so that is something regarding harold pinter uh, the comedy of menace uh, the memory plays etc now we shall discuss also about tom stoppard Tom Stoppard was born in 1937. Now, Tom Stoppard is a Czech-born British playwright and a screenwriter. Tom Stoppard was was born in Czechoslovakia. He left Czechoslovakia as a child refugee, fleeing imminent Nazi occupation. He settled with his family in Britain after the after the war in 1946. Now, he he has written for television, for radio, for film and stage. his plays are internationally acclaimed tom stoppard uh, tom stoppard was a thought provoking dramatist his his work covers the themes of human rights uh, political freedom and he often goes deep into the philosophical themes of the society 
yeah, so philosophical themes, a thought-provoking writer. Uh, his themes will go deep into the uh, problems of the society. The important works of Tom Stoppard are uh, following some of them we can remember. The first one that we can remember is uh, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. That came in 1966. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. Now, this play was an instant success. It is an absurdist, existentialist, tragic comedy. The play is uh, an expansion of the exploits of Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Now, this, these two characters, Rosencrantz and uh, uh, Guildenstern, they are two minor characters of the play, Hamlet by William Shakespeare. There is the Jumbers uh, by Tom Stoppard that came in 1973, and there is Arcadia that came in 1993. There is the Cost of Utopia that came in 2002, and there is a rock and roll that came in 2006. My dear students, we are coming to the end of another lecture, and in this lecture, we have discussed about uh, the verse drama, we have discussed about the well made place, we talked a little about the royal court theater, kitchen sink drama, absurd drama, and three important dramatists uh, Samuel Beckett, Harold Pinter, and Tom Stoppard. Thank you for your patient listening. Please make a summary of the lecture as your assignment.